when you are actually hands-on materially healing somebody, do you feel a flow of energy from you to the other? You can feel that. You can train yourself to realize that, note that, because you can also heal somebody without releasing energy. My question is about my work. I've been a body worker for many years and lately have started doing distance work as well. So it ends up being working in energetic fields more. So I do have like guides that help me and also working with um, like the elements and those energies. I guess my questions are about how we heal in our bodies and also if you have advice for me working in this this field. For you working in this field, I would need to hear from you a little bit more clearly and precisely what is it that you do and then we can take it step by step. So what do you mean by body work and energetic work? Can you describe it more precisely? Okay, uh, the work I do is called matrix repatterning. So in person, I'm doing hands-on work, com doing compression of releasing dense areas of the body where there's been impact and trauma, like releasing impact injuries. As I'm moving into distance work, I basically do that same, like scan the body the same way, finding those areas that are dense in the energy, like I feel that, and then holding kind of a compression on the area so that it would release in the matrix of their body. I'm assuming I don't have great language for it. I feel like I'm learning as I go. And then also, as I've moved into distance work, I do communicate with guides, basically. So intuition, it feels like beings that are helping me see these areas in people's body. And almost helping me release these areas of density, if that makes sense. Yes, I think I've grasped a bit of what your work is. So there are two areas. One is the area where you actually are touching people materially, physically, when you're present with them. In such situations, it's very crucial to protect yourself because in the process of healing someone, if you are going to lose the energy that you have gathered through certain discipline or certain practices that you do, then it is not going to be good for you in the long run. It's going to drain you. And the thing with such energy transfer is that when that draining starts, you won't even be aware of it. You will actually want to deny it, because it means that something is happening which is not in your control during that process, and it's very hard to accept that something like that could happen. So first, you would have to fundamentally accept that a draining of your energy is possible when you do those works. That's the first thing. If you accept that to be correct and possible, then you need to develop systems, put systems in place that your energy is not drained during that healing process. I've had many people ask me these questions, and when I suggest the possibility that energy can be drained, there's a, uh, there's a rejection often, because it's frightening, you really don't know, unless you're trained to know that, when that's happening. So, if you personally, now I mean, feel that that possibility is there, then it would be very important to put those systems in place. And the way you put those systems in place is that you first observe when you are actually hands-on materially healing somebody, do you feel a flow of energy from you to the other, you can feel that. You can train yourself to realize that, 
note that because you can also heal somebody without releasing energy from your system. Anyone actually who does any kind of healing where they touch the body of another are dealing with the possibility of the draining of that energy. So you start to train yourself to create a barrier between yourself and the person you're healing, a barrier which, while allowing you to release something in that person, release the pain as you put it, also prevents the draining of energy into that other system. Because that you can't afford to do, because that in the long run will result in illness in your system. So it's not something you can afford. So you start to observe the next time you touch somebody, and you've probably observed this already, that you see, is there a flow of energy from you into the other? Because the other one's system may be very low in energy and takes that from you. And then you start to pull back, you pull back, you pull back, you create a barrier, and still you go through, it's a porous barrier, because you have to go through energetically to also release that area of impact. You can experiment with it and find out, you know. But a lot of people just do these kind of things and they have no clue that the energy is flowing away from them. And then after a couple of years of doing it, they're just finished, you know. And they just can't do it anymore. They're burnt out, literally burnt out, because they've burnt away their energy. So that is very crucial to protect your system. Another way to do that is also to be in a surrender process. You try as much as possible to operate throughout your day, throughout, from morning to night. You try to be an instrument of the Truth. You have at the center of your system this Truth impulse. And you also have to deal with the great ego noise the ego lie. And so every urge to action that arises from your system, it's being like a scientist, you're trying to find out where is this urge to action arising from? Is it arising from the ego noise, the ego lie? Or is it arising from the Truth impulse, the Soul impulse? And that's how you start to discern. So when you discern your actions, Gradually, what happens is, you become more and more an instrument of the Truth. And that helps you to gather what we call in Sanskrit, Jathar Agni. It's like this Agni, this fire of, of, of tapas, of uh, practice, of sadhana. You gather this all in your system. And then you certainly have more energy to play with than if you or work with, then if you don't have a practice which is a defined, clear practice. So that would be when you are hands-on, when you're actually physically touching somebody. When it comes to working with people energetically over a distance, so there you're already operating in a bigger unknown than when it is actually hands-on. You also don't know the other person always. You don't know what energies are directed towards you when you say or do something. Let's say, we are in this online satsang. It's a new phenomenon for human beings in general. Anything could be happening at the other end. There are other people on this satsang. Maybe someone's angry with me suddenly because I say something. I have to put in place systems so that I don't become a victim of these unknown quantities. So, while you move into surrender states, through this practice that I speak about, you also expand your consciousness, so you become more sensitive to who 
who who is the person or where is it or where is it coming from you can start to identify and that's very interesting when that happens because you're expanding your consciousness through that bending and that expanding consciousness is also allowing you then to know what is going on out there you speak about guides intuitions so it's a bit of a fuzzy domain there's not yet that much clarity also because it's new for you to do these things so you will have to find your way cleave your way through that new territory if you are taking the help of guides and you're doing it consciously always remember that nothing nothing comes for free in this universe energetically i mean it is always better if you know who those guides are if you have the ability if you have the the occult knowledge to know who are the guides and if you are able to identify it's always a good idea to return to give something in return it can take different forms but you have to be aware of it a lot of people say to me i'm an angel healer i work with angels i would say oh that's nice what are you giving the angels and then the feeling is oh, but angels don't need anything they're beings of love and my question then is how do you know that would you be ready to do something for nothing i don't think so so why should that be expected from angels and that is not very well received because the feeling is well the angels are there they they are beings of love and they are supposed to help me because i'm helping other people right that's the approach okay so you're helping other people you're helping other people but you're getting something for it you're getting money for it so what are the angels getting then oh they're not getting anything but uh why do you assume that the angels don't need something maybe they need something you don't know about it so it becomes a process of surrender bending trying to find out what can you do for your guides it is an occult action you know it is not a guide that you can touch and feel and talk to you can speak to them yes but first you have to identify who they are feel your way through that with respect with a quietude and with a readiness to give wherever it's possible to do so or where you understand the mechanisms there has to be deep deep humility otherwise in a few years the energies are burnt out so those are the two things i would say one the area of energetic transfer over time and space and the other when you materially touch somebody and you can actually feel that energy transfer materially from your body to the other or the other way around sometimes so that in a nutshell is where i feel you can you can move experimentally currently always in a state of surrender always bending always humble whenever one is humble nothing horrible can happen but if there is this big ego that thinks it knows everything and can do it in those moments is where the danger then happens i think in your case it's not so much of danger but it's always good to be forewarned you know these are these are people underestimate what goes on you know when one does energetic work it's very very challenging it's what the shamans do you know you are the you're a modern shaman so you better be careful what you're doing you know and very very deep humility always bending down to the truth yes thank you